Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So it's been a while since I've made a video, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on what is happening in the garden. I've been really busy. In fact, I'll be teaching some fly fishing classes this summer at a boys camp. I've been really busy trying to set that up and get that going. It's gonna be a really fun time and great for the kids, but that didn't leave me a whole lot of time to do stuff in the garden. I have been upkeeping the garden, but I just don't have time to be able to video. Now, that, that is gonna change pretty soon here. Now that everything's set up, um, teaching the class doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's just kind of setting everything up, filling out paperwork, doing that. So uh, now I should be able to get back to your regularly scheduled programming here uh, of at least once or twice a week of putting posting up videos. But I wanna give you a quick rundown on everything that I'm doing right now so you guys can stay caught up. And from this point forward, you guys will be able to kind of understand what's going on. So I'm starting here with the tomatoes. They are absolutely insanely huge. They're getting really big. I've already harvested tons of tomatoes off this. And every day I'm coming out and there's new ones available. These ones here, as you can see, just got huge and I've harvested so many off these, it's just crazy. So this is the sun gold, as you guys might know if you've been watching. Uh, these two here are the sun gold. They produce really well here, they like the heat, uh, they, they do fine, and they actually set fruit even though we've been having 100 degree days, they're still setting fruit. We've got tons of new fruit being set. Pretty much most of the cherry tomatoes are doing fine. So this is a super sweet, I believe it's called, or Sweetie, actually, sorry. So this is a Sweetie. This one is producing the least. I've actually got a little bit of disease going down here, which I need to trim off some of these kind of dying leaves and diseased leaves at the bottom. Uh, there's a little bit here, but not as much as you can see. So this variety, the Sun Gold, does much better in my environment. This is a Super Sweet 100, and that's producing, I mean, you can see, look at all these fruit sets here. It's just, they're everywhere. They're riddled through, they're producing a ton. I would say though, even though that's supposed to be a higher producer, the Sun Gold is actually producing more even than the Super Sweet 100. So I'm not sure what that's about. Um, that's supposed to be one of the biggest producers out there of little cherry tomatoes and it's doing really well, but boy, these two Sun Golds are just, they're doing amazing. This, is starting to finally do pretty well. This is the purple Cherokee. And I had another one right next to it that died back. We had really high heat. This can kind of handle the heat, but the unfortunate thing is it's not setting fruit. It'll, it'll flower, as you can see, we've got flowers right here and then it's not setting fruit. And that's because we have 100 degree days. It just can't handle that. So I need to get maybe a shade tarp over top of this and that could help. And excuse my rooster in the background. Every time I say, he'll be quiet. And then I bring out the camera and I start filming and he, he wants to be on video, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's pretty funny. These are the two Arkansas travelers and they're doing well. Again, no fruit set yet. I'm not harvesting these onions. I'm just leaving them in because they kind of help deter pests a little bit. And I have no use for them right now because I've been harvesting, and I'll show you that in a minute, I've been harvesting all of my onions over there, so. And I've also harvested quite a bit of my basil here. I've got two basil plants. Um, I keep on trimming them off because they start to bolt here in the heat, but I just keep trimming them and then they'll keep producing, so. Um, this is the oregano, it's doing great. I kind of have it back here in the shade just so it doesn't, you know, get scorched but it is growing really well. It's just kind of overflowing this pot. Probably pretty soon start cutting this back and drying it. Sage is doing pretty well. Unfortunately, back there, my thyme died back, but the, the thyme is not really for the summer. It's a little too hot. Uh, the flowers here, by the way, are doing really well. There's the marigolds. They're just, they're, they're really good, guys. They're, they're growing well and you know, they're, they're really good to grow with tomatoes. So, uh, calendula, and then, you know, these are so slow for me. I don't know why, but uh, I got a weed here, of course, but um, these, these are uh, chamomile, and I don't know what it is, but they grow so slow. Um, you know, you read that they're supposed to be fast growers, but they're the slowest thing I've ever grown. They, I don't know what it is, why, uh, why that is the case. Maybe, maybe I'm not growing them right. Uh, maybe the conditions aren't right. It might be too hot for them. I don't really know, but. Uh, next, this bed was all, if you guys remember, all squash, uh, summer squash, and they got all wiped out. 
Um, I mean, that happens. They're, they're quick growers, so they grow up really quick, produce, and then they start to die back, uh, usually with disease and stuff like that. So um, I took them out. I had a really bad problem with the squash vine borers. No matter how many of those eggs I picked off, probably a hundred a day, uh, a couple of them still got in, of course, you know, it's just what it is. And so they got d demolished by those. So I planted more squash and I've got a couple different varieties in here of squash. So right here is the Black Beauty on both end caps here. Both of those are Black Beauty. And then I believe that one's scallop and that one's scallop, the white scallop. And then this one's the yellow scallop squash or called Sunburst. And I think this one is the eight ball zucchini. So uh, more zucchini here, more, more summer squash. Um, I've end capped here a couple spots. Excuse the dog shampoo there. We gave our dog a bath out here, but um, it's not doing well. But that is echinacea and basil. I just needed a place to put echinacea and there was an extra spot there. This is going to grow big but it's gonna bush out. That Black Beauty zucchini gets real big and bushy. So um, I just wanted something at the very corner. And then the same thing here, that's another Black Beauty. And then I put the, the basil on each side here. And that's for a couple reasons. Actually basil and most of the herbs tend to help keep pests away. So, I mean, you know, they were growing in garlic, which helps too. Um, and <laughs> basically this was a big garlic bed and it didn't seem to help it, but you know, everything I can. Uh, here, uh, this thing probably needs to be taken out now. Again, uh, it's a summer squash, so they tend to die pretty quickly. But this is the avocado squash or tia pat put or something like that. It's it's a weird name, but I think it's Korean. And uh, it's still kicking though. It's still doing okay and producing a couple fruits. So I've left it uh, so far. You can see here's an, uh, another fruit set. So that one's doing okay. I'm leaving it for now, but I probably should rip that out pretty soon. We did have a little bit of problem with the squash vine borers, um, although not as bad here as some of these others. This is the other Black Beauty zucchini I haven't removed yet. I haven't worked on this bed yet, but I need to remove it. It did, as you can see right there, right there is damage from a squash vine borer. Um, now this trunk down below had a little bit, but I was injecting it with that BT and it was working. You know, I can't catch it every single time. And right there you can see there's a little hole uh, for one, that little black dot there. And uh, when it gets further down, um, this starts getting kind of too hard for them to burrow in, but they'll hit it, you know, up here. So I haven't been working this up because now it's at the point where I, I know I'm going to remove it pretty soon. I just have one you can see it down in there one squash i'm waiting for it to get large enough to harvest and then i'm wiping this one out and i'm gonna pull this and we'll be replacing this with something else so this is my queensland blue you can see it had some damage damage that i missed i mean i injected it and all that but it's just not catching it all it's got big massive roots even throughout um it, it's setting roots way out here because that's what they do they'll they'll find an area to to root down and I mean, I can't lift this because the roots are attached in the ground right there at each one of these nodes. So you can see actually a little root coming up right there. And uh, that's what they do. So they'll, they'll start to root when they touch the ground or get moisture and uh, it'll root throughout, which uh, that's keeping the rest of this alive because otherwise all this down here is dead. Now, there's no connection to the roots because it got destroyed by those squash vine borers. But being a winter squash, it vines out, it roots down. And uh, that, that's a good way if you have a problem with those, as long as you can control it until it hits good soil, um, you actually will keep it alive. Now, I don't have a lot of fruit on this. I just got one and you can see it right there. So that's gonna start turning blue pretty soon. And as soon as it turns blue, I'll be able to harvest. But that got massive. You can see it just uh, huge find all the way out. I don't think it's going to set any more fruit though. It's just too far gone from the squash vine borers. So probably in another about month, those should go away. There's not going to be any more pests for vi uh, squash vine borers. We'll have some problems with other things like cucumber beetles, but uh, they should be going away pretty soon. So I might be able to get one more planting of some kind of pumpkin like this in. Now, one thing that is not having any issues and it's actually doing really good, you can see it over here. Okay, so it's it's worked its way, kind of vining all through here. Um, here's more of it right here. 
This is a cantaloupe. And look at that cantaloupe right there. That is getting nice and large. It's a good looking cantaloupe. And this thing, I mean, it's, it's vining everywhere. Um, and that's what cantaloupe do. So slow start, but it's getting pretty big. Now, as you can see, I've got a whole lot of weeds all through here. It's really hard to weed in between these because they just, I mean, they, they cover everything and they're supposed to be able to suppress some of the weeds a little bit. And I think they have slightly, but still some weeds, some persistent weeds get up through and it is what it is. You're just going to have to leave it. At least I'm going to leave it. I'm not going through and spending time and effort trying to weed it. I don't want to damage the vines here or break stems or anything like that and keep me from getting a good harvest. So I'm just, I'm leaving it and letting those uh, weeds grow. And once I remove all this, then I can come through and weed eat and cut this down. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, but that's that bed. I'll probably be redoing it, um, pulling out that vine right there, the Queensland blue, and of course that, and then probably this, and replacing those with something else. Um, more likely it's going to be like watermelon and cantaloupe because it seems like the squash vine borers aren't attacking those, so I can grow those here pretty easily without a whole lot of issues. Here is another squash. This uh, We already harvested one. It was over there. Um, and then here's another. They're really pretty. They're, it's a Japanese, I think, maybe a Korean, something like that. Um, Asian style squash. Um, and this, it's like a pumpkin, but we ate actually that one last night and it was really good. Super sweet. Um, not quite as sweet as like a butternut squash, but definitely really good. It was, it was, it was really good. Nice nutty flavor. It was really, really good. Not stringy at all. It's not huge but I think it'll continue growing a little bit. We're gonna let that grow as long as we can. It doesn't seem like this has any more fruit set. So as soon as we harvest that, we're gonna rip that out. That one there died off. And so we'll just kind of redo these two pots with something else um, once we remove that. Probably weed eat all this. Again, it's kind of hard when, when you're growing squash. So we'll remove all the weeds place the pots back down and start there. Now, this is the onions. We've got a couple here that I got to harvest again. Whenever those stems break, that's there. there's no more nutrients going down into the, the root, then it's time to harvest. You can see I've harvested quite a few all along here. Um, we've got a couple really nice ones like that one. We were able to get about four pounds of onions so far. So that's, that's pretty good. So these are the two apples that I had grown from seed and they came from the same exact apple but you can see they're two vastly different plants. This one got bushy, um, it didn't grow tall and it's slower growing but it's much healthier. This one it wants to shoot tall and it while it has a couple offshoots this one has branches this one seems to have just have offshoots from the from the base. Excuse the train in the background guys but and this one is seeming to not do well with the heat and it has some disease going on, so I don't know what that's about. We're in 100 degree weather, it's just not made for apples very well, but this might actually be a really good root stock. So this bed, I have some cucumber in the back, okay? Um, and then here, I've got some winter squash, okay? So this is all winter squash, acorn squash. This is actually, it's a summer, but the avocado squash right there. So I've got two of those, um, and that will be a vine, so I'm gonna trellis that up. And then these I'm gonna have grow off the end here. And those are the buttercup squash. So I haven't grown that yet on video, but um, th those should produce a really sweet squash. That's really good. And then this is a sweet dumpling and uh, that one will vine as well off, off the end. It's a winter squash, so. Uh, the peppers are absolutely amazing, guys. I am blown away. Uh, so these peppers, if you remember, I had some major issues with both my tomatoes and peppers as the seed starts. So they were dying back, they were having issues, but they finally, finally are taken off and there's just no issues whatsoever. Look at all these fruits. I mean, you can see they're just producing tons of fruit. Look at all those guys. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I got probably 10 fruits on that and on that one over there. Um, probably 10 on every single one. I've got one here that is ready. So I'm going to all right, I was able to harvest that. That's ready. It's a little cherry kind of pepper. Uh, they're sweet peppers. Look at these Anaheim chilies here. They're just amazing looking. That's the smallest one. The second round is bigger, you can see there, and right there. So there's the Anaheim 
they're doing well. This is that Gypsy Hybrid, which is a sweet pepper. And just look at that production. It's amazing. Now they're not as big as like a bell pepper, okay? Um, but they have the same flavor and you get a lot more. Uh, you only get like one or two, maybe if you're lucky, three bell peppers on one plant. These smaller varieties, the Gypsy Hybrid, man, it's it's a producer, guys. Uh, it's amazing. So uh, I have a feeling it's gonna continue to produce, uh, especially once the weather cools down a little bit. Probably come the middle to end of September, it'll start producing more flowers and producing again. But during the heat here, it's kind of in survival mode. Now over here, I've got some potatoes. This is russet, and then that's like, uh, I think a purple potato, like one of the little ones that you get at the grocery store in the bags. I already harvested, I had a white potato here. Um, it was actually in the same bag as that. And I only got maybe a handful of potatoes. It was, it was maybe like six potatoes and they were small. They were like this big. It wasn't a lot. I, I just didn't get a big harvest. We'll see how that one is because this plant had died back. So I figured, okay, it's time to harvest, but there wasn't much there. So it probably just kind of died back with the heat. Uh, maybe it didn't get water one day and it just died, but these still are kicking. They don't look great, but I mean, that's potatoes. The You're not growing the, the veggie on it, right? So you don't eat this because that's poisonous, really. You don't eat the leaves you eat the roots. So the roots are what you're going for. So you're not necessarily trying to look for the healthiest green. You're looking for it growing roots. So, you know, let's hope, let's hope uh, that I've got some good potatoes down there. So we'll see. I'll, I'll bring you guys in for a harvest of that pretty soon. The heat is kind of getting to my mint here. It's just not doing as well as it was and then the heat killed back a lot of these cucumbers okay so they just they're not doing as well as they should um, also being in pots they dry out a little quicker um, i have a feeling that these are going to do a little better in ground than the potted version okay um, these are all the same varieties by the way so i'll go over my cucumber varieties i didn't do that so here is the tender sweet burpless i've got a straight eight that is homemade pickle and this one here is the Tokiawa, I think it's called. So that's the Japanese really long, thin cucumber. So that's what I've got there. I got four of them. I ended up putting three here. That's a bait alpha. That's another homemade pickle, which is actually doing the best here. I mean, look at that growth. Same thing with this one. It seems like it doesn't mind the heat. So that's that's something to for me to think about. Um, what I grow next uh, seems like the homemade pickle is doing the best in the heat. And then this is another straight eight. For what I'm growing, I think right now in the summer heat, this is the star of the show, is sweet potato. And it is doing amazing. Now I've got a little yellow going on on the leaves down below, but that's okay. I'm not growing this for the veggie. Now you can eat the leaves. This is not a regular potato. It's not poisonous. They're actually really good. It tastes like spinach. And I have been harvesting some leaves and using them as spinach. You know, uh, here in the summer, can't grow spinach, especially in Texas. So this I can use as like a little a little green for salads and, you know, stir fries or whatever. So I have been doing that, but I'm um, getting a little yellowing because I am not giving it any more nitrogen because I want it to focus on the roots. But I am giving it some potassium and phosphorus, slight amount of um, nitrogen. Uh, so I use the fish fertilizer, which is a 5-1-1, but I use probably half of what is recommended. So it's really a two and a half. But then I use the Mora Bloom. Uh, with it, which is a 0 10 10. So, and I use the recommended amount. So, I'm getting like probably a 2 10 10 is what I'm giving these. And I've only given it to them once in the last month. So, I'm not doing a whole lot of fertilizer because you're, you really don't want that. Um, you want them to focus on the roots. You don't want them to focus on growing greens. Um, you need the greens, of course, okay, in the initial stage, right, like this. But you don't want it to continue because it will just bush out and get huge if it's focusing on the leaves. No, you want that to focus on the roots down below. This is the normal orange sweet potato you get in the store. This is a all purple sweet potato. It's a, uh, I think a Japanese style sweet potato and they're super sweet. They're really, really good. Um, they have a, they're even sweeter than the orange sweet potatoes you get in the store. These are pomegranates that I started from seed and they're doing great. So the peaches, we got one peach. That was it, it had a whole bunch of fruit set and then they died back. Um, they, they shriveled up and fell off and we got one, one peach. And that was off this one. I've got two peach trees and this one produced nothing. Here, we've got a pear that I planted in the ground as a bare root probably three months ago and I still don't have a single leaf. So it's worrying me that it didn't make it. Um, same thing with the apple. 
it was about the same timing and nothing nothing off this no leaves popping up i do keep getting them coming off of the rootstock but then i trim those off because i don't want the rootstock so our soil is terrible out here i tried to till if you guys remember all these sections i tilled them up i tried to remove as many rocks as possible i tilled as deep as i could by hand and it just wasn't enough so this here is sorghum and millet it's already trying to form little heads on it and that's the size of it it's supposed to they're supposed to get tall um so unfortunately this did nothing and the same thing with my summer wheat the the spring wheat here is uh it all died back and this is the beans i had planted these are supposed to be really good for this area but they're not doing much so these are the black eyed peas they're heat and drought tolerant but not enough here and i guess because this is just all clay and that's it. So I really need to either amend or get a tiller in here, a good tiller and just remove all the rocks and till down deep, which I'll talk about that in a minute. I can't grow anything in this bed. Uh, this corn popped up and it was doing really well initially. And you can see it's just dying back and it never produced, uh, it started to. Um, and then the, the winter squash here um, did nothing. It's just, it's dying back, it, there's not enough soil here for it to get the roots down in it's just too hard and compact no matter how much i till this so um here you can see it's all dying back we've got some problems with mold and stuff but there's an ear trying that just didn't do anything i've been watering this regularly it's just not enough especially in 100 plus degree weather here is the newer crop of corn which is actually doing a little better um so this is the dent corn. Um, it's a little bigger variety than the popcorn. Unfortunately, I lost one to wind or maybe an animal came through and knocked it over, but um, this is doing a little better. Out here, I dug down here, found my main. I was able to cut the main and put in a uh, shut off. Now we do freeze in the winter here. So I put in this, my father-in-law helped me do it. And you can see I've got a little cut off um, it's all insulated and stuff but that's gonna that's gonna help with uh, keeping this from freezing in the in the winter I can just turn it off there and then I don't have to worry about the hose or anything up above ground because we do freeze in the winter it's not not often but we, we do um, so I was able to put that in and that's gonna make it easier for me to water all this it's really difficult with the hose that's way over there um, with the 200 foot hose to try to weave it through and make sure I'm not knocking over any plants. That's gonna really be beneficial. And that brings me to what I plan on doing. So I was talking with my neighbor. My neighbor has access to a big tractor that he can come in, uh, remove some of these stumps. So you can see right here, um, I've got some tree stumps that are starting to regrow and same thing over there. I got one here, I got a couple here. I've got them there and just all throughout. So he's gonna dig up those tree stumps and then he's got a tiller or a friend that has a tiller attachment for his, his tractor. And um, he's gonna come in and till all this up for me. So I'm hoping that, and also I think they have a basket that can remove the rocks. So if they can do that for me, it's gonna cost a pretty penny. It's not, not inexpensive, but once this is all tilled up and, and done well, I can tarp all this, okay, for like about six weeks and that's gonna kill any of the weeds any of the grasses, any of the weeds that, you know, seeds or whatever, it's gonna kill it off. Okay, so that's what I plan on doing. I'll tarp it all for probably six weeks, maybe a little longer, especially in the heat of the summer here, that should kill everything off, especially with a black tarp. That's what I plan on using. So silage tarp it's called. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll bring you guys along for that process, but I'm gonna tarp all this. I'm gonna have it tilled way back, all the way back here, probably up to the chicken coop, all the way out to that tree back here and then all the way down. I'm not gonna have them touch here because this is my water. So I don't want them tilling up near the water. This is the water right there, you can see. So it goes right along here. So I actually tilled up right at the water, but it's about a foot and a half deep. So I didn't have to worry about it um, where I was tilling. But if they bring a tractor and they're digging, they can't. So it's, it goes right along here. So they're gonna till from like this point over. So all the way down to right here. Uh, maybe even a little further, I might have them till close to the tree, even though that, that's all shade. I can grow some lettuces and stuff that don't require a lot of sunlight and then all the way down. So I'm going to have a pretty big area. It's going to go down to my chicken coop and then over like this on the, just this side of my hugo culture bed. Of course, they're going to miss all the trees, 
but once this is all tilled up then I should be able to come in like I said I'll tarp it and then I'll bring in some compost put it over top um, and then I can start growing um, and I think uh, I, if I bring in the compost and then I start growing I'll probably do a cover crop first something like uh, if it's in the summer still and hot I can get something that's a quick like a buckwheat um, something that's quick uh, overturning that can handle the the summer heat grow the buckwheat that'll kind of help you know the roots will get into the soil help break things apart still even more and help kind of hold that so there's no compaction it keeps the compaction from happening come this winter then I can start planting some winter varieties of veggies all out here so that's the plan so this will turn into a pretty big area I'll be able to grow quite a bit um, in fact this is probably I would say maybe about a quarter acre area that I'm going to be tilling up so I should be able to start growing pretty much everything that my family eats um, won't have to go to the grocery store as often you know will for a couple things that maybe I can't grow but um, you know a vast majority of our food will come from our land at that point so that's the plan it's going to cost just a little bit of money to be able to get that started but once it's tilled and if I maintain it well there should be no issue uh, going forward ever needing to till again. That's the update. It's a big, long update, I know, guys. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video, so I want to give you guys the full rundown of everything going on. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, if you could hit that bell notification, they'll give you updates for future videos and let you know when they're available. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now, you guys try to escape the daily grind.